Hi, I'm Rick Dior. I have a little project going here I wanted to uh, do a video on. I purchased this old marching outfit from my friend Ting up in Pennsylvania. He kind of deals with these uh, auctions and he buys these drums there and then he, he sells them. So we find some pretty interesting stuff. This is an old set of special order Slingerland marching drums. So we have a 24 inch by 14 bass drum and two 16 by uh, 16 uh, marching field drums. And I have uh, certain purposes I'm going to use these for. I'm going to redo these drums, these two marching drums here, uh, with different snares and different heads uh, to use them as part of my field drum collection where I record a lot of rudimental snare drum things. And this bass drum here, I'm going to make this into a drum set bass drum because I really like the size. 24 by 14 is a great sounding bass drum for rock recordings, especially this old uh, wood here. I believe these are probably from the 1980s, maybe earlier, uh, judging from the badges. And I'll give you a little tour of the inside of these drums. So I already took this one apart, and you see the beautiful wood here. It's very old. So old, in fact, that um, when I was dealing with some of these loose lugs that will happen sometimes with the old drums, you know, they'll, they'll dry out and then they'll become loose. And then I had another washer. I was taking one off and it actually, it broke. So you got to be careful of that. This is what that looks like when they break. There's no way really to get around that. Sometimes you can put some oil on there and try to inject it in there and take them out. But some will break. And then what you have to do is you have to drill them out of the lug and then just get another screw, which I'll do. So this one did that. I got the top in with, with, with another washer. Most of them are pretty tight. They have just two washers. But what you do, you don't try to tighten it because you will break them. But what you do is you add another washer there or two. But half of them are loose. And that happens on these old drums. Like I said, what happens is they... Um, they, they will, that wood will shrink. But it's a great drum. It's got the TDR strainer. Let's see if we can find that here. The old badge here. This is upside down, of course. And here's the strainer, upside down. So these are vintage Slingerlands. I know they're going to sound great. All right, so it's about a week later. I've had some time to clean these up and it came out great as I hoped it would. I took the ropes off, I cleaned the, the shell. Pretty old these drums. Um, cleaned all the hardware. There's two field drums if you remember. And this one I put the original gut snares on. See that? And a fiber skin head. We'll play this real quick. pretty ringy obviously without any muffling and this sounds more like a traditional field drum and this other one I doctored it up a bit so what I did with this one is I put a Remo ambassador on the top let me see if I can get it off here it's kind of heavy and I put some old Patterson snares 15 inch snares and this is a 16 inch drum but they work great, and uh, they sound fantastic. I think they sound better than the gut snares. And I also kind of tweaked the bottom head. I got it pretty tight, so it's a little different sounding. I'll play it a little, little for you. So as you can imagine, playing on a 16 by 16 drum, it's like playing on a floor tom, pretty much, that's tightened with snares. But it's a huge, deep sound. Hopefully, the recording with these cheap little cameras will portray that. Uh, and then the bass drum cleaned up really nice, and it's everything I hoped, so I'll play you a little of that.
huge sounding and um, it's wide open. There's no muffling at all. And I did put a pinstripe on the front of the drum. Also, I am using a little bit of muffling on this drum, as you heard. These are the mufflers I always use. You can also use something a little bit heavier. So this is something that um, my friends from Sims Music in Columbia, South Carolina sent me. It's like a, a snare wallet. Put a drum key in there. Just put it on here. I'll put the information in the description. But it really dries it out really nicely. So if you're looking for a real dry sound, I'd recommend that. But right now, I don't want it that dry, so I'm just using this piece of leather. Well, I will actually play it for you without any muffling. So it rings quite a bit, but it's a nice ring. So I've been playing it open some, but um, today I'm just going to use a little bit of muffling. Cleans it up. So uh, I have a little project that I'm working on where I'm doing um, kind of a little bit of a, of a book, and uh, it's a little secret right now, but I'm going to use this setup for some of the things. And I will be using a hi-hat sometimes. It's a lot of times when you're playing an orchestra or theater music or whatever, where you have to be like a one-man band as far as the percussion section goes. So you do cymbals and bass drum together. So I'll just play a little uh, for you, and if you have any questions, as always, just uh, email me or leave a comment, and I'll answer them as fast as I can.